Disclaimer, this video heavily discusses animal abuse and animal death, so if you are sensitive to those topics, please proceed with caution. Friends, you know how sometimes you're on your social media, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Tungle, and you see a post that just really steams your beans? Makes you really want to hunt down the OP, break into the room in the dead of night, wake them up, slap them across the face, and say, you absolute fucking fool. Maybe it's a post about politics. Maybe it's the Flat Earthers. Maybe it's a really, really stupid take on your favorite TV show. For me, it was a video of a chimpanzee. So there's a fun little guy. He's holding the person's hand, leading him down a path. That's, that's fun and cute. He's got little hands. That's interesting. Brings momentary joy. There's nothing wrong with this video. There is everything wrong with the caption. OP says this. This not only proves evolution, but also that animals are better than us. So holy shit, what does the chimp do? Does he does he cure cancer? Does he end racism? Nah, he helps the human get up into the treehouse. Wow. There are human beings out there working hard to end suffering for the less fortunate. They're fighting for justice and equality, but okay, mate. A chimp helped a human into a treehouse. So that's proof they deserve to be the dominant species. Excellent. Do you think this guy's ever seen BBC's Planet Earth? An enemy youngster has been caught and killed. Probably not. Viewer, there is nothing that shits me more than people treating wild fucking animals like they are virtuous angels that can do no wrong. Listen, I was a Sydney wildlife character for a number of years, and the most valuable thing I learned from that job was that you can't put a value judgment on an entire species, whether it's good or bad. I don't think it's a hot take to say all animals deserve respect. No animals are inherently evil. Not even the objectively shitty ones, like the blobfish or the ibis, nature's crackhead uncle. But I think the opposite must also be recognized as true. Wild animals are not our friends. They aren't good. They are individuals. They are nuanced. They have their own ways of interacting with the world that are completely alien to our own. And I know this is the internet, but it's possible to see multiple sides of something and not take your opinion to either extreme on a spectrum. There is a safe, happy middle ground in between Wolves of the Devil's Quadruped and He's a puppy! Ooh, 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 ooh. We, by which I mean everyone online, needs to find that middle ground and set up shop there. If you are the kind of person who reposts gifts of sharks and crocodiles and hippos with captions that include any adjective followed by the word dog, I want you to know that I hate you. And if I ever catch any of you in this tank talk, that says sharks are sharp sea puppies, I will personally run you down with my car. Now, if you think I'm weird or a killjoy for dying on this hill, uh, you're wrong, I'm not. The black market exotic animal trade pulls in about $19 billion a year. And while I couldn't get specific numbers on how much of that is dead animals versus live animals, I don't think the live animal trade is something that should be ignored. Because the internet is full of dumb fucks who think they can just walk up and high-five a fucking grizzly bear or a gorilla or some shit. And it's in no small part because of clowns like Mr. Chimps for Prez 2020 over here making sweeping statements about how animals are so good and wise and better than us. It's also in no small part thanks to trash Instagram accounts set up by either rich weirdos or people who run dodgy wildlife refuge parks to basically post cat videos of animals that could and will, and let's be honest here, should kill them with only 15% of their true power. And before anyone goes calling me a hypocrite or saying I'm a pee to sleeper agent who tries to destroy the concept of zoos, listen, yes, I have been known to on occasion search cute hyenas, playlist everything that comes up, and then watch all of it and say, he's a baby, every time the hyenas do anything. But I don't comment that. Um, I keep that shit to myself because I respect the hyena. I know that he's not actually a baby. He is a grown up. And if I were ever to make him mad, he would bite my head in half and eat all of my bones. With all of that out of the way, let's examine some trash tier animal content. So a lot of these videos I'm going to be reacting to I found through a blog called Why Animals Do the Thing. They are a really good website run by some genuine experts in the field who are doing a lot of good work for conservation and education about wildlife. Definitely check them out and support what they're doing and read their posts for more education on this topic.
If you dig a little further, you'll find that the Siberian Tiger Park in China is actually less like a wildlife park and more like one of those touristy places up North Queensland where they farm crocodiles to be killed for their skin, but you can also throw some meat for them for fun. The Wall Street Journal appears to not be aware of this fact at all. I'm not going to spend a long time talking about the Siberian Tiger Park, because it's depressing! And also, nobody needs my white people thoughts on how Chinese people treat animals. I really just included this video because a bunch of the top comments are I stand with PewDiePie, so something terrible happened here, I can just feel it. Here's one I am actually qualified to talk about! When I was training to raise kangaroos and wallabies, one of the number one things they told us was that a grey kangaroo joey needs to be raised with a buddy because under no circumstances should you let a grey kangaroo joey play fight with anything that isn't another kangaroo joey. Because sure, it's fine when they're babies, but that baby's gonna grow up, and when it does, it's gonna be jacked as all hell. You ever seen an adult eastern grey kangaroo? This lad is yoked. Hench. Unit. In awe of the size of this boy. And if he's been raised by people, He's gonna go out into the world thinking that it's acceptable to go around kicking people. And buddy, when a full-grown male gray kangaroo comes barreling out of the bush looking to engage in some friendly kickboxing, unless you are armed, you're gonna die tonight, sir. So with all that in mind, you can understand why this dog's life is probably flashing before his eyes in this video. Look at that poor son of a bitch. He probably has no concept of what animal that is. And it's just grabbing his head, and he wants to leave. He hates this. The kangaroo's actions say, friend, pet the friend. But the dog's actions say, please, buddy, just take the wallet and leave. This doesn't have to get violent. Oh, what? You thought we weren't going to do sea beasts? Psych! Here's a sea beast. You know how you're supposed to punch a shark in the nose if it attacks you? That's because they have complicated sensory organs in their noses that sense electrical currents. And if you jam that signal, the shark goes into shock. This shark here isn't having fun. He's being forced to look into the deadlights. And most types of sharks suffocate if they stop swimming, so there's that. Noopsie doodle! More than the gif itself, I really want to show you the absolute garbage in the reblogs. Why you pet me? Keep pet me. Just got war flashbacks to 2010. Raw a shark for I love you. I would very much like if more people would pet sharks and be good to them instead of trying to hurt them. Please, sharks are very lovely and should get pettings like these more. Smiley face. What did I say at the start of this video? If the shark is friendly, pet the snoot. If the shark is dangerous, boop the snoot. If the shark is about to kill you, boop the snoot. If it's not, leave it alone, he's just chilling, you don't know him. Boop the snoot, that took years off my life. Best example of humans looking at predators and thinking, danger fish friend. I don't know what's worse, sharp sea puppy or danger fish friend. They're both horrible, but I wonder which one would win in a cringe war. Probably still Sharp Sea Puppy. In both of those posts, I wasn't able to get to the source because it appears that the OPs have deleted their blogs. And honestly, good. Don't post trash animal content if you cannot handle being clowned. This video was one I found on my own when I googled pet octopus for some reason. Beautiful. <laughs> but dig to see, I got some issues, man. Her home is falling apart. I can hear her calling me up in my room. Daddy, I need a new tank. There is so much to unpack here. First of all, Tracy Morgan, host of Scare Tactics, has just so many sea pets. He's a certified aquarium guy. That feels so weird to me. Also, Tracy, you have this giant beautiful aquarium for all your fish, but then this stupid little choose-your-own-lobster-looking one for the octopus. Why doesn't she have a nice tank? Do you hate her? Does, does the octopus come out and walk around the house? Well, Meg, you're asking me, do the tanked boys give the octopus a nice tank more suited to her needs? No, idiot, of course not! I wouldn't be roasting this video if they had. The tank is like... Really, I really love my, my uh, creatures, all of my creatures. I don't like to leave none of them out. I take good care of all of them in my house. Tank sized for a giant Pacific octopus. Emphasis on giant. Also, why in the world would you keep a pet octopus? Where, where do you get a giant Pacific octopus? I'm so mad, guys. I'm mad. Now, here comes the big one, the biggest clowns of them all. 
the main event. Viewer, have you heard of an Instagram account called I Am Puma? No? Your day's about to suck. I Am Puma is an Instagram account run by a Russian couple who rescued their pet cougar from a dodgy zoo, which is code for they walked into the zoo and they were like, I want that one. And the zoo was like, so here's your puma, I fucking guess. So now Messi, named after a football player, I think, lives in a flat and has to suffer all of the indignities that annoying people on Instagram force their pets to suffer. I pity this creature. I'm not a puma expert, but I think the face of existential depression is universal. My least favorite thing about these goons, other than the fact that they appear to sell merch, is that they have other pets. Imagine already having a cat and a dog and being like, nah, I want to make my home life even more stressful and more complicated. I'm gonna get one more pet and it's gonna be a puma. Look at this cat. He thinks he's gonna die. Imagine that was a human child. It would be fucked up. But since it's a cat, idiots online are like, no, it's cute because the big cat, he growl at the small cat and they are the same animal. I think the owners of Messi use him to shred up their tax returns. I have no evidence of this. It's probably not true, but that's my personal headcanon. Have they, have they censored out Messi's dick? That's what it looks like in the thumbnail. Yes, Messi, do it! Do it, Messi! Kill him! Kill him! Emancipate yourself and feast on the meat of those who would oppress you! Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe next time. If I, if I wish hard enough. Anyways! I think that's enough anger for one day. If this video also makes you angry, here are some things you can do to support animal welfare and education about wild animals. You should check out Why Animals Do the Thing, donate to Rachel Garner's Patreon, and support what she's doing on that site. You can also donate to Sydney Wildlife. I used to do work with them, and they are a pretty great organization. You can also support your local zoos and reputable wildlife sanctuaries. I will post links to some good ones in the video description. I think... The main thing I want people to take away from this video is that animals are not better or worse than people. Because we're all just animals. You can't expect to be friends with every person in the world. So, you shouldn't expect to be friends with every animal. If you want to have an animal that's your friend, just get a dog or something. This has been the Meg Salt Hour. Thank you for joining me, and drive safely.